So uh, here we are in the free Ford 500 uh, again. Uh, observe my check engine light is on. Not an uncommon sight for Fords. Um, but it took me a while to figure this one out. I suspected an intake leak and uh, let me explain why. I actually know what the problem is. I have video of how we diagnosed it. And take a look at my scan tool here and you'll see that our codes are uh, system 2 lean bank 1 and system 2 lean bank 2. That would be, uh, you know, it's a V6 engine, so that would be each side is uh, one bank. So the engine is running lean. Now if we go to the uh, actual diagnostics here, I think I have a custom one of these saved that just shows us the fuel trims, which is what we want here. Custom data list. Yep, there we go. So, um, see the, the long-term fuel trims are really high. I guess they're maxed out. Um, and the short-term fuel trims are rather high. They should really kind of be around zero, maybe very low single digits. Now, watch what happens when I bring the engine up to uh, about 2,000 RPM. Eh, or that. There we are, 2,500 RPM. See the numbers drop? So that sort of was telling me, all right, this sounds like a vacuum leak because the... Um, uh, once the engine is sort of uh, given more power, it sort of overcomes that leak a little bit. Now, once those long-term numbers hit their max, which looks like it might be 25 in this case, um, it tells the computer it can't do anything else to adjust this um, lean condition. It gives up, throw the check engine light, something wrong. Now the uh, display on the scanner is cold right now. The display is uh, a little laggy. But you can see that um, the long-term numbers have dropped significantly and the, uh, the short-term numbers are eh, fairly low. So I tried the usual ways of diagnosing this. You know, like spraying carb cleaner all around the intake and the, uh, you know, the air box and all that trying to find some sort of more obvious intake leak and I couldn't and uh, my friend Dave suggested to me to while spraying that look at this and uh, I went to his place and we used his fancy snap-on because it gives a, a bit of a better graph of although my camera didn't pick up anything on that LCD for I guess it was washed out for for the camera's taste um, so, uh, i bring that back down. Yeah, see, and they shoot right up those long term numbers. So, you know, for the evidence I was reading online, kept saying vacuum leak, vacuum leak, vacuum leak, and I'm like, eh, I don't know, I don't think so, because these numbers, these short term numbers, they're not crazy off. You can see right now they're actually okay. This car will go for weeks without throwing the check engine light, but the more it idles, you know, like it just sits here, like now it's cold, I've been starting the car up in the morning, letting it warm up, uh, the uh, the more likely it is to then throw this, uh, this, this light. But if you do a lot of driving, you know, on the road without a lot of stopping and idling, uh, it's happy because it's not detecting any real problem. And to demonstrate that, here's a clip of it on the highway. I'm doing about 70 miles an hour. Car's good and warmed up. You can see the uh, short term numbers are pretty good. A minute later, the highway just ended. And look how quickly those long term numbers climbed up. You can see the short term numbers are still okay, but the more the car idles, they're going to start to climb. I'm going to show the video now of how we diagnose this problem and of course uh, obviously I have yet to fix this problem and you will see why it's just a little tricky but uh, a little sneaky vacuum leak absolutely super slight and if you suspect it this seems to be a great way to detect it because there is no audible difference in the engine when I sprayed carb cleaner around the intake um, but there was in fact a leak so here we go
Mm. Well, let's try something. I think I have mm. a, a cut apart propane torch tip. Yeah. Let's see if we can try that method. Oh, the propane method. Yeah. yeah, all right. In theory, feeding propane in there should make your short term uh, jump or drop. I'm not sure which way it's going to go. We should see a result. Okay. I have this busted ass nozzle here, so it makes it okay. I used to put a piece of hose on here and shit. Yeah. So the propane will do a better job than, say, spraying carb cleaner around the... Because that's what I've done. And that's... It'll creep in the around stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. and like you say, the fuel's heavy, so it'll fall downwards. There's our O2s and springs. Okay. So now we're just looking for a change in the fuel trims, though, right? The well, short term should be the one that's going to change. All right, well, we're at uh, about 2, 1, 2, somewhere around there. 3, 0, 2, 1, 0, 3. It should go into the negative, right? If it, uh, I think so. Because it's going to be running rich and it's going to try and correct. Negative 1 on one, negative 1 on another, negative 2. One, negative one, one, two, uh, positives again. Negative one for a sec. So we spent the next several minutes spraying propane everywhere without too much luck. Every once in a while, though, we get a small hit. Hmm. Go back around this area again. That was the only time, you know, it could just be coincidence that it went into negatives. Try around here. Then, for a long time, nothing happened. But then, suddenly... Oh wow, that went to negative four there. I thought I heard the engine change. Yeah, it did. Both both uh, went to negative four. Negative. I think negative one occasion right here. Negative one, negative one. So we were having a great deal of trouble pinpointing the exact location of this leak. Every time we thought we'd found it, we couldn't get it to do it again. What was that fluke thing? Try over by the EGR. Where's that at? Right there. And that's when we struck gold. Negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six on one, negative two, negative two, negative four, negative two, negative one, zero, two, negative three, negative four, negative three. Negative one, zero, one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative two, zero, one, two, three, four, five, two, one, negative one. Fuck! No, not in that. I mean, the EGR is not removable. It, it seized so, on there. I know from the LS motors. Yeah. See where this pipe is going into the plastic? Yeah. There's an O ring on that. Oh. Uh huh. I'm wondering that O-ring's leaking. Oh. That's right where I was dumping propane. Right where that seal is, where those two... Yeah. Just watch those numbers for me. Yeah, hold on, all right. Negative one, uh, one, two, negative two, negative one, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine! Negative six, negative five, negative four, negative three, Oh. It was all just gas, though, at that point. Huh. I would say that's got to be it because of the way uh, those numbers. What did I say? Negative nine or eight somewhere there? That's, that's, that's a lot of uh, correction. So there's an O-ring. Negative nine, negative ten. You see right where I'm pointing it? 
Yeah, yeah, where the EGR right where the pipe, pipe goes, goes in. into the tube, yeah. I bet it's that O-ring. Oh, yeah, all right. Huh. Well, what do I do about that? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it is because I tried to get that EGR tube out of the intake manifold because I couldn't get the EGR disconnected from the pipe. Right. So I, I messed with it. And then I found out that to get to the cylinder I needed to change the coil pack, there was enough clearance for me to just lift it up with the whole thing as is anyway. But I mean, what you could probably do instead of fucking with that, yeah. disconnect all this shit. Yeah. You could probably unbolt the manifold. Uh-huh. Pull it out and sneak it in there. Oh, what? Pull out what? Pull the manifold out. Well, we, well, you could disconnect the manifold, but you can't get it off. No? No. That tube, I guess the way it's curved when it goes in there, oh. you, you can't get the EGR off of it. That's what I was trying to do initially. I'll have to smash open one at the junkyard and see how it's made. He's brab. How about... Well, in lieu of that... Yeah, RTV? the fuck out of it and pump RTV on the fucking copper huh. RTV in there. Yeah. Ha, huh, you like it. Uh huh. So that's where it lies. I still have to figure out how to fix it, of course, but I think the method of using propane and a scan tool uh, is an excellent way to detect very small vacuum leaks. But before you go, just a few more words of wisdom. <clears throat> Dura means durable, and tech means tech. So, like the ego tech. Eco is economical and tech means tech. Yeah, it's just like that. Gotcha.